Time now for sports with Tom Wiley. Welcome back. Last week we introduced you to our future of the Frontier Conference series as the league stares down LC State uh, leaving after the upcoming school year. Today we continue with our series with the league's commissioner who, quote, refuses to be negative as change approaches. Richie Melby brings us part three. When Ken Paulson was named the Frontier Conference Commissioner in 2009, he was stepping into a dream job. Fast forward 11 years, and Paulson is still living that dream. Yeah, Richie, you've hit it on the head. I mean, you've heard me express before of uh, how honored I am to be and privileged I am to be a, a part of this great conference. A former educator and coach, Paulson oversees a league that's nationally respected for its athletic and academic prowess. After growing to nine full-time members in 2012, the frontier is now down to seven following the departures of Dickinson State and Westminster College, with Lewis Clark State set to leave after the 2019-20 school year. And despite the out-of-state exits, the Frontier remains one of the most powerful conferences in the NAIA. And I guess if you have to have a, a bit of a, a negative in losing a family member, uh, it's, uh, it's a little more palatable when all of a sudden you're winning a women's national championships and you've got two men's teams playing in the national semifinals. Uh, you know, we just refuse to be uh, uh, negative in any way, shape, or form. June's annual Frontier Conference meeting was focused around scheduling for the 2020-2021 school year when the league will fall to six teams. That's the minimum for a league in the NAIA to earn an automatic berth to national tournaments. We kind of bill ourselves as a we can do conference. We're going to always keep our eyes open. Uh, we, we want to obviously bring quality schools in, but uh, our job is to uh, serve the, uh, the present. And uh, we're not going to let our student uh, athletes down in any way, shape or form, uh, irregardless of uh, you, you asked me for a six-team schedule, a seven-team, an eight-team. I have even got a nine-team schedule. Paulson's emphasis is simple. Take care of the league's current schools and student-athletes while keeping one eye on the future to maintain the Frontier Conference's status as a national power. You can ask any uh, commissioner in the NCAA or the NAI. Is, is it's a very fluid process. and. You know, coaches get ready uh, each week to uh, play an opponent and commissioners get ready each and every day to uh, tend the flock. No good commissioner is going to let a day go without uh, turning over the next rock. And we're, we're reaching out. We want to tell, tell our story. We want to tell people, uh, you know, wh why would it be good to be in the Frontier Conference? Because just as you lose people, you, you, you can't go introspectively and say, well, what's wrong with us? Uh, you have to turn it around just like a salesperson and you got to say, hey, this is what we have to offer and this is what's good about us. And so uh, that process continues. The Frontier's already a proven winner on the courts, fields, and in the classrooms, so it seems likely suitors will come calling. Richie Melby, MTN Sports. Well, you can find the full series at MontanaSports.com. Meanwhile, play